somebody got something I don't know about. Okay, man. All right. Uh, our Sunday school lesson uh, this morning is entitled A Victorious Kingdom. That's the text of Mark, chapter 3, verse 13 through 19. And then chapter, excuse me, one minute. <laughs> I apologize for that. That is the Tim Thomas production, not a Fort Baptist. I get, I get that guy later. Anyway, where was I? Um, Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 19. Then chapter 6, um, verses 13 through 13. Golden text reads, he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them for the priests. Mark three and fourteen. Let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this time of dialogue and fellowship. Uh, we pray that you speak to us and through us. The Spirit of the Living God, all fresh on us, and on us from the crowns of our head to the soles of our feet. Make the book plain and allow it to talk. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, all right. Uh, if I use the term a victorious kingdom, in your own words, what does that mean to anybody? Not, let's not let everybody speak at the same time. I know y'all anxious to answer that question. Yes, ma'am? I didn't hear. If, when I say the word victorious kingdom, what comes to mind? The kingdom of God, according to uh, our relationship with Christ. Okay. Anybody else? You've right to it. <laughs> but that's the that's what jumps out when it says victorious. That means we say it again. The kingdom that wins. The kingdom that wins. And the reason we win is because of who is at the head of the kingdom. That would be Jesus. Amen? Alright, so always remember this. No matter where you are in life, no matter what season you're dealing with in life. On the other side of what you're dealing with, you're going to win. Because we have the victory in Jesus. Amen? All right. So, when we look at this third chapter, verse 13, first verse says, And he goeth up into a mountain. Let me do this. Doesn't matter who. I need somebody to come to you. I need you to turn to Luke chapter 6 real quick. And then I'm going to ask you to read. Uh, in just a minute. So, Mark chapter 3, verse 13 says, And he goeth up into a mountain, and he calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. That would be Jesus going into the mountain. Uh, the reason I want you to look up Luke chapter 6 is because when you read the synoptic gospel, sometimes one goes a little more in depth in a particular subject than the other one. They all see it from the same or different angles. That's why we call it synoptic gospel. I know you already know that. Uh, just fill in their space to get where I'm going. Who got it? Luke chapter 6. All right. Read verse 12 and 13 loud, please. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom he also named apostles. All right, so here's what I need you to understand. Luke goes a little, dip, a little deeper, and he brings out this. It was more there than the twelve. It's just that twelve were the ones that got chosen. How, how many of you all? How many of you all have heard this saying? God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the call. Amen. 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 Yeah, it, it just it is because he, here's, how, here's how it works. He calls you, he equips you, then he sends you. In this particular case, they have a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus. You and I don't really get that because in Ephesians chapter 4, he talks about the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Watch this. For the edifying of the body of Christ, he equipped the saints for ministry. You understand what I'm saying? So, so whether it's a one-on-one -on -one with Jesus, or it's like Paul sitting at the feet of Gamaliel for three years, 
or if it's like us coming into the church and the gifts, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, we are going to be equipped to serve the Lord. Amen? Amen. Watch this now. If you've been walking with the Lord for a while and he ain't never sent you nowhere, you might not belong to him. All right. I know he ain't talking about nobody in here. All right? <laughs> you might not belong to him because if you can just live and you don't have a sending that God wanted you to go somewhere and do a work for him, mm -hmm. you might not belong to him. Does that make sense? All right, so, 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 again, chapter 6 goes a little deeper. It was more of them, but he chose the 12. Now, watch this, don't trip on that, because there's always going to be an inner circle somewhere. That don't mean we're going to be in it. That's right. But watch this, watch this. That's not a knock, because it just simply means you're not in that circle, you're going to be in another circle. That's right. He got a place for you. Does that make sense? That's right. And he got something for you to do, or he never would have... We, when we hear the word calling, we think of preaching. Yeah. As if it's the only calling. No. No, no. no it, it, you know, we call to do different things. And preaching just has to, let me say it like this. That's the most well known because it's in the spotlight. Everybody see the preacher. Well, when God calls you, whatever it is he's going to send you to do, it is just as important right. as the preacher. Amen, somebody. So he called it unto them. Watch this now, watch this. Who he, watch this, whom he would, and they came unto him. Check this out. Y'all don't miss this. They responded. Mm -hmm. Can I tell y'all something? Right. Everybody don't respond to the call. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and, this, and this is the trip part. I'm old enough to know this and say this now. I don't know what kind of life you can have that would be worth living it without Jesus. <laughs> That's right. And I'm just wanting that. No, you're right. Go on. I mean, I, I now, in my 20s, I'd have been like, no, I'm going to go try that. <laughs> but now, I look back and go, no, that ain't worth trying. That's right. Because I know better now. That's right. There ain't, ain't nothing out there that you're going to get. Nothing. Come tell you something, baby. Cemetery is the great equalizer. Yeah. <laughs> you'd be like, you'd be like, look, look, when they was here, they lived in that. They drove that. But now, they out here with everybody else. <laughs> Right. Watch this, watch this. And even if you're fortunate enough for them to put you in one of them little buildings, you still have. <laughs> does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah, so, so, so everybody didn't respond, but they did. Now watch this. Just keep this in mind. I'm going somewhere. Be glad that you responded. How many of y'all remember when Paul was in front of Agrippa in Acts? And he asked me, he said, King Agrippa, I know you believe the prophets. I know you believe. You know, the people said, Paul, thou almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Uh -huh. But he didn't. Man, what would have happened if he would have went on here? <laughs> watch this. At that moment, God was calling. Okay. But he rejected. Yeah. They didn't respond. <laughs> These boys responded. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but I'm glad I responded. Amen. Watch this. In all my mess, I'm glad I responded. Yes, I'm the better for it now because I'm in him. Mm -hmm. And I'm going. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to win because he is the victor. Does that make sense? Okay. So, verse number 14 says, and, the ordain, and he ordained 12, consecrated, set aside, that's all that means, that they should be with him. Let me say that again. Be with him and that he might send them forth preach. Okay. How many of you have ever heard this saying? God doesn't need your ability. That's right. Just your availability. That's right. No, 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 no. One of the problems that in the world today, probably always been, but I can't speak about then. I was then. I can only speak about now. Many of us, we just ain't got time for it. Go ahead on You know, y'all went south on me right there. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I'm amazed at the things we really, really need to do. Just ain't got time. But isn't it strange that a funeral stops everybody's coming? That's all right. So true. You're like, man, we ain't seen you in years. When's the last time you home? Girl, you know, I'm just so busy. I ain't got time. Somebody transitioned everybody in town. Why does it take that? You understand what I'm saying? Think about I just want you to think about the stuff or the times that you spend with the Lord or the times that we don't, but we really should. Okay. Does that make sense? Paul, Paul said he's been married for three years. 
These boys travel with Jesus for three years. Now here's what happens when they spend time with the Lord. Watch this. They learn. They get to be with him. They get to know him. They get to know his character. They get to know his personality. Watch this. They, they get to know how to learn to do ministry the way he wants to know. Can, can I tell you something that I did not benefit from? Not just me, but all most of those that came along with me that's in our organization. We don't do a very good job of training ministers for next level ministry. No. Jesus was about training them so that when he sent them, they'll know what to do. In our organization, not, not this church, not this not our Let's watch this. He get called to ministry. This is how it was done with me. You got to preach. You got to teach. Then a church calls. Notice this. He ain't got no people skills. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Six months in, a conflict arrived. Yeah. Yeah. He got a way he thinks it should be done. Mm -hmm. He got a way he thinks it should be done. Right. Now, they're going to bump heads. But watch this. This is what they're going to say about him. Oh, man, he's just thinking he do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. This is what he's going to say. Oh, he don't want to listen to God. <laughs> <laughs> problem is we we'll never train to go to the next level okay. Jesus don't leave us out there like that yeah. he needed them, watch this, he needed them to be with them, and I say this all the time, especially to young ministers some of the mistakes you need to make are at home because okay. this is where you're being trained mm -hmm. so then when you get sent out there you'll know what you're doing yes, Amen. You know. Somebody. that makes sense? Yes, now that doesn't mean that you're going to be flawless because you're still human but at least you will have a foundation that you will always know, man, I done got in this hole, but I know how to get out. <laughs> you taught me some stuff, I know how to get back almost as straight and the now. Am I making sense? Comments, questions, concerns. Don't hear about speaking at the same time. <laughs> but you're right. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, watch this now. Watch it, watch it, watch it. What if, what if Jesus had a guy from the mountain called them. And next week they was like, oh, we ready. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Couldn't be. They're like, whoa, no, you're not. <laughs> no, no, you're not. <laughs> now, now, see, let me tell you, I just I just use myself as an example, man. When I started out in ministry, watch this. Digging this. I was long, long zeal, but short on wisdom. <laughs> you know, because you think, man, you just ready, man. You got the green light. Damn, let's do it. Let's do it. No, oh, man, you gotta learn some stuff. You know, I'm amazed at now. My oldest son, he calls me. He got married three years ago. He's got a grandson. Well, two weeks ago, the Lord blessed him about his first home. Yeah. All dad know what he's talking about now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so it's kind of, he got questions now about pain. And I'm saying to myself, and I try to tell you this five years ago. Oh, no. You don't think I know what I'm talking about. You know? but, but, but like this, I ain't judging my son. I did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then it was like, wow. So the point is, I'm just glad that I was able to pour some things into it. God didn't get that. You know, I didn't get a relationship with my dad until I was 22 years old. Married and had a daughter at the time. So the fact that Jesus wanted them to be with him. When someone wants you to be with them so that they can show you some things. Because check this out. Check this out. Whether you want to admit this or not, we're going to pass off the scene. What are we leaving those that's coming behind us? That's right. Yeah. See, I'm convinced, Sister, nothing should stop because we're not here. That's true. Okay. That's true. That's right. So true. Nothing. It doesn't matter what it is. Ministry, all this. Nothing should stop because we are not here. But if, if they have not been trained, guess what? It's going to stop. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you got to think, see, you got to think ahead. Jesus was thinking ahead. Watch this. By getting these 12, Watch this. Ministry can go faster, can go further, and can go all over the place because now he has help. You know what that tells me? You and I are an extension of him in here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So your name 12, they should be with him. Send them to preach. Watch this. I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. Watch this. Watch this. Every Christian has an assignment. Might not be the same as mine. It might not be the same as hers. But watch this. If he called you, he saved you, he equipped you, he gonna send you somewhere. That's right. okay. And I'm gonna tell you this, it's good for you, but you ain't gonna like it. Nine times out of ten, it's gonna be somewhere you don't want. <laughs> Why? Every dark 
spot needs a light. That's right. Man, there were some places, I look back over my career, man. There were some places I'd be like, boy, come on, what I do? <laughs> this is what, I, what did I do? It wasn't that I did anything, so Smith. It wasn't that I did anything. Need some light in there. Mm -hmm. No people need to know, see, feel, and hear the love of Jesus. That's, right. That's why he sends us to, watch this, I'm going to just tell the truth, because maybe this wasn't y'all, but this was me. I was just like Jonah, I ain't going to go there. <laughs> <laughs> You already said what you're going to do to him. Look, I won't do it. Yeah. Don't judge them. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't judge them. They're like, well, we want all the mercy in the world. Mm -hmm. and then when somebody be like, yeah, no, don't get them. But no, don't get them. Do like you did me. Save them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what he's going to do. He's going to call you. He's going to put you. And he's going to Amen. Questions? Amen. Comments? Concerns? You know what? Yes, ma'am. say this. Don't miss this. <clears throat> One of the ways we know where we're supposed to be, even if we don't agree with him, is because we've been with him enough to know his voice. Yes. I'll tell you this right now, and this applies to all y'all in this room. Yes. You can put me in the biggest super Walmart in the world. Put me on aisle five. When I yell out, Every one of my children are going to know, that's my dad. That's right. That's right. Why? Because they know my voice. Mm -hmm. Why? Because of the time that we have spent together. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons why Jesus has a problem sending many Christians, not all, is because we ain't been in his space long enough to recognize his him when he's talking. Mm -hmm. okay. That's just real. Now, that's not a knock against anybody. It just shows you the importance as to why he wanted them with them for those three years. Before he started his public ministry. He wanted them to hang out. So watch this. Oh my God. I bet you and your husband have been married long enough that I can finish each other's sentences. Time. <laughs> Just time. Like, man, I know what she's thinking, man. I watch this. Mom's gonna do this. <laughs> How do you know that? <laughs> anyway, I almost got myself in trouble. But anyway, you know what you know what I'm saying, right? Time. You just been together so long. And that's what the Lord wants from us. Check this out. I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna move to the next one. Jesus took 12 men and started a movement that has never stopped. Mm -hmm. Of course, when we get down a little further, you know, one of them didn't work out quite so good. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't care if you got ten numbers in your church, one of them is devil. Everybody in our church, sir, we can say we know everybody. Okay, all right. Yeah. All right. All right. I had a co-worker one time. I had a co-worker one time. She said, uh, she said, Mr. Tom, me and my daughter are best friends. She tell me everything. I said, no, she don't tell you everything. She, she just couldn't. She just she tell me everything. So watch this now, watch this. So when I, I was in North before I came over here. About three years later, she was sitting in the office. I went in there one day. She had a head down. I said, so what's wrong? She said, I'm going to tell you this. I said, my daughter, messing with this little boy. Mr. Tim, I snatched her phone. She took a picture kissing that boy. I said, but I told her, she's going to tell you everything. <laughs> see, 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 I don't know why we think our children are angels. True. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I> don't like <laughs> <laughs> they, they don't tell you everything. Yeah. Look, look, someday me and my brother didn't tell our mama until we got grown. Yeah. <laughs> said, Y'all did this. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I wasn't going to say nothing yeah. but you was going to stay in my hide. Yeah. <laughs> Make sense? Yes. All right, let me do this. Let me get a reader. Let me get a reader. Uh, I need one person to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And I need one to go to James chapter 5. I'm going to have them read for you real loud. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and James chapter 5. Now let me read this scripture. Watch this. Verse 15 says, And to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Yeah, that's right. It gets a little sensitive. So I'm going to try to deal with this in an impromptu, delicate way. Uh, we know from here and we may not get to it, but we also know, if you look down at verse 13, okay. he gave these guys power to heal and the ability, authority, to cast out demons. So watch this, follow me, watch this. You go up to him and say, in Jesus' name, he would be healed. Watch this now. So, so the question always comes up, is that for today? And people get mad, get offended. So we are you trying to do that? But I want to show you something on what can work for now and how God operates in that. Who got first Corinthians chapter 20? All right, read, read loud. I want you to go to chapter 12. Chapter 12. I want you to read, start at verse 5 and read down to 11. You'll go loud. Okay. <laughs> There are differences of ministry, mm -hmm. but the same Lord, and there are diversities of activities, mm -hmm. but it is the same God who works all in all. Mm -hmm. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gift of the healing mm -hmm. by the same spirit. Mm -hmm. To another, the working of miracles. Mm -hmm. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretations of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, dis distributing to each one individual as he will. Ah, read that last verse one more time. But one and the same Spirit works mm -hmm. all these things, mm -hmm. distributing to each one individual individually as he will. Who will? He. he. Who will? He. he. Okay, so back here. When he got to 12, he gave them that power. Mm -hmm. Watch this, watch this, follow me. Everybody in this room might not have that. That's right. Okay? Because he just read to you different gifts, but ministered by the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Okay? Oh, watch this, as he will. Right. Some people will ask you, do you have a gift of the spirit? Mm -hmm. Based on their background, they want you to be able to do everything in that right. list. Yeah. But that might not be the case. Yeah. You might have a gift that she might not have. Right. He might have a gift that he might not have. Mm -hmm. Now, when the 12 came to Sakana, he gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Everybody don't have it. Yes, but right. watch this. That's not a knock. 
Just because you can do one thing, watch this, don't mean you bigger or better or better than this That's person. Right. All That's of right. it works together yeah. because That's all right. of it is given for the glory of God. Mm-hmm. So never be intimidated That's because you don't do right. such and such. Right. Be like, Man, so now, this is what I say now. I got the gifts he gave me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I, I got what he I can do what he has given me the ability to do. Watch this. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to be trying to do stuff he ain't gave you the power to do. Because right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to remind you of a story in Acts chapter 19. Well, these boys saw Paul doing some stuff. He walked up to this cat and said, man, I adjure you by the, by the Jesus that Paul preached. Come out. The Bible said the devil looked at him and said, I know Paul. I know Jesus. Who are you? Cat was trying to copy cat. Demon, watch this. Demon jumped out of the man but not and beat him out his clothes. Yeah, this stuff ain't no place to it. Right. Either, either you can do it because he's gifted you to do it, or you can't. Right. And that does not make you less than somebody else that has another gift. Am I making sense in this? Yes, yes. Right. Yeah. That's what you say when you mean stay in your own lane. Stay in your lane. Stay in your you do. I you know, say I'm called to do this, ain't called to do that. That's right. I, I was with some people the other day. And they was asking me a question, like an interview, and they said, "What do you do to relax in, in your downtime?" I said, "I go fishing, and I watch nature." I said, now a lot of my future friends play golf, ain't got no time. Because you get me out there, all I'm going to be doing is driving that little cart all over the place. And everybody. <laughs> that's, that's not my thing. I'm, I'm serious. That's, that's not my thing. And, and then, fishing rods do not have a lot of that's expensive in golf carts. <laughs> ain't got nothing against it. That's just not me. You know, my wife tell you, I got a lot of men. You got to get too. No, I ain't doing that, man. I'm going to be out there on that boat. I'm going to be on that pier. That's how the Lord talks to me. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't no sense of me going out there because y'all will get mad at me. I'm going to be trying to pop a willy in that little car. <laughs> so, so watch this. Watch this. Let me do this. Let me do this song. What's that next scripture I asked you to get? James Somebody go to James. We got James chapter 5 for me. All right? Real loud. Uh, verse 13 through 15. Read that for me, please. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. If anyone among you sick, let him talk with the elders of the church. Let them pray for him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And he has to, and if he has to be his sin, he will be forgiven. Hmm. So watch this. God still heals. Yes, he does. Just like he did then. It's just that. I might not be on my use anymore. I might not have the ability to just go up and bang. According to that scripture she just read, mm-hmm. you, you run the reference to that word elder, whether it's 1 Timothy 5, 1 and 5, Acts 11 and 30, 1 Peter chapter 5, when Peter talks about being an elder, it's always talking about those who are in ministry. So you call them in. They'll take the oil and anoint, and they'll pray over that person. Y'all seen people do it in nursing homes. Y'all seen people do it in hospitals. And the prayer of faith will heal them. You got to understand, God still can move today, just like he moved yesterday. But here's why I usually get in trouble. God is sovereign. You know what that means? He does what he wants to do. For some people, healing is going to mean you're going to get right back up. You're going to keep moving. And for others, healing is going to be the grace to get off the ventilator. Or the ultimate healing is you're going to transition to be in his presence. That's Come right. on, talk to That's me, somebody. Right. You see, right. here's what we lose sight of. You can't stay here forever. That's right. Does that make sense? That's right. so, so don't get caught up in that. I hope I didn't confuse anybody. I just want to help you out when it comes to this thing because, you know, sometimes, you know, people try to make light of this. Either you can do it or you can't. So be careful who's lying you get in. That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll make sure you're on the same page. So watch this. Watch this. Verse 16 says, And Simon surnamed Peter, James the son of Zebedee, this is the choice, John the brother of James, the surname of Bornerges, which is the sons of thunder, and Andrew and Philip, Bartholomew and Matthew, Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus and Simeon the Canaanite, Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him. Check this out. No, watch it, watch it, watch it. Decaps from all walks of life. All different backgrounds. I'm going to tell you something, and if the Lord bless me, I'm going to just kind of give you a little something. I'm going to try to deal with this a little different in Vacation Bible School, go a little deeper, but just for the sake of time, I'll tell you this. Jesus often chooses people we want. 
Yeah. Yeah. Jesus often chooses people we would never choose. That's right. What we fail to realize is, Bernard, we weren't worth choosing, but we wanted to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lord, Lord, we, if we have a hard time affording people the same grace we want. Mm -hmm. We hear people say stuff like, "Tell my child, you ain't never done like that." Yeah, but you did something. Yeah, true. Exactly. Yeah, true. Now, 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 I, I remember, I remember my old pastor, the licensed he used to say, "Yeah, y'all always out here to my house." These young people out here, we need them sitting fast here down out there trying to sow the wild oak. He said, well, we out here trying to sow shreddy wheat. Say amen if you can. We forget from which we came. Why this? Why this? Get the young son in there. Man, if he hang around us, he'll be thinking we walk on ice. <laughs> We ain't always been saved. That's true. That's right. That's true. Man, let me tell you something. Jesus pulled his rag tag bunch together. They was rough around the edges. He had to quack it. If Peter wasn't cussing you, he was trying to cut you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. This, 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 no Judas, man. That cat was just down. He just bought the money. But Jesus still told him. <laughs> Why? Even though the scripture declares that God is angry with the wicked every day, mm -hmm. but then there's another verse that says, for God so loved the world. And he gave his only begotten son. You shall believe it, should not perish, but have everlasting life. He just thinks of us that much to the point where he was willing to go to the cross. I'm going to tell you right now. Whatever it is you're doing for the king, you are qualified and you don't deserve it. It's just by his goodness, grace, and mercy yes. that he allows us to do what That's we right. do. And I'm glad about it. Okay, Amen. thank you. Five minutes. Lord have mercy. Time we got away. Okay. They, I talk too much. I was going to say y'all, but I'm the one that didn't talk too much. <laughs> but anyway. Anyway, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So, so let me do this. Verse 6 says, and he went about round about the village's teaching. Now, at this point, that's an observation moment. Because they're with him. Can somebody give me in your own words a quick definition of teaching? No right or wrong. No right or wrong. Anybody? It yes, ma'am. Is to use yourself as a demonstration. Somebody can see what you're doing. That's so they good. Can see yeah. what you're doing. They can learn it better than you. You, you are. You've been in my notes. They can't move that chair. You've been in my they notes. Can you. Uh, they can see what you're doing. That's, you know what? That's so good, I ain't even going to ask nobody this. This is my definition. This is my definition of teaching, Bernard. I do it. You watch me. Watch this. Then we do it together. Then you do it, and I watch you. See, when you get comfortable with it, then I release you. That's what Jesus did to them. Let me tell you something, baby. You ain't going to get the keys to my car, and all you've been in is assimilate. <laughs> You got, to, you got to get out there. I know you're scared, but you got to get out there. Does that make sense? Yeah. Jesus had them out there. Before he released them, he was with them. Training. It's everything. Man. There's some stuff. Now, you got people out here. Let me say this to you. Because you got these people out here. They're in a minority. They, they just move on raw talent on some things. Not spiritually now. Because you need Jesus to do spiritual stuff. Some of y'all was in school with a cat, ain't never do no homework, made A's on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, how in the world do you do that? Y'all yeah. trying to practice, you just working your heart out, that joke just show up half high and be doing everything. <laughs> that just, that, and, and, and watch this, believe it or not, there's some things in here you can do with your eyes open, not spiritually, because you need Jesus for that. <laughs> so when you come to the training aspect, he was there with them, he did. All right, man, I'm not going to be able to finish this. And he called unto him, the twelve, and began to send them forth two by two and gave them power over the unclean spirit. I'm going to end it with this. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah, I got time to do that. I got three minutes. Verse 8 says, and he commanded them, and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shod with sandals and not put on two coats. He said to them, in what place soever you enter, and house, there abide till you depart from that place. Master question. How well do you follow instructions? How well do you follow instructions? See, because watch this now. Let me just say this. The key to success in ministry is to do what he said. Watch this. Not what everybody else is doing. 
What did he tell you to do? He, he told them not to take some things, and, and, and this is where we get in trouble. Yeah, but I can add a little bit of this. No, that's not what he told you. Do what he tells you to do. Say what he tells you to say, and go where he tells you to go. Everything going to work out when you do that. Huh. Sometimes the flesh can get real of this. Get a little smart. Mm -mm. Follow the instruction. You do what God tells you to do. I guarantee you. No, you say it like Charles Barkley. I guarantee you. Why? He's only responsible. To bring to pass what he told him. That's right. That's right. He's not obligated to sanction my will. Only his. That's right. There are times when I know something's going to work, because that's what he told me. Then if I step out there, I had a preacher friend tell me one time, I was struggling with something, and I tried to pull something off. You know, this, this, it was a ministry move. That I was trying to do because I thought it would help this, that, and other, but not. And this is what he said to me. Tell me, did God tell you to do that? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to end on this. This is a challenge. This is a challenge for everybody in the room. Sometimes we do playbook stuff. But now I hold your Bible up, please. That's playbook. How many of y'all think that I'm a sports fan? Sports fan? Yeah. When you watch football, guys get criticized because they don't study the playbook. Mm -hmm. When you hear him, man, he, ain't, he don't even know the playbook. He don't even know the playbook. Can I tell you something? Sometimes as Christians, we're guilty because we get outside the playbook. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, you, I'm telling you, man, all of us in here got some stuff we're doing in the name of the Lord and got no Bible attached to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we're wondering why God ain't moved on it yet. Come on, I, I remember. I, I, Come on, man. I'm just saying, I'm not listening. I'm not laughing because I'm in the same boat. Mm -hmm. well, you look back and go, man, why am I doing that? Man, I ain't got no scripture in the world for that. Right. But we were raised like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Big Mama was right on a lot of things, but not everything. <laughs> All right, we got to the end of this. I got, watch it. I got to be obedient to the time. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time of fellowship and gathering. We give you glory and honor for all that was said and done. We take no credit from you, but we just thankful, Lord, that you use us. Because like that ragtag bunch that you chose, none of us are qualified, none of us are deserving. We just thank you, Lord, that you love us enough to die for us. Give us a chance. So whatever it is we do, Lord, we do it to your honor and to your glory. Now, as we leave this part, the transition into another portion of today's service, we ask that you be with us. Speak through the man of God. Sing to those who will do song ministry. Stand with those who will be on the doors. Bless the waiting congregations. We'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to y'all. Happy Father's Day to y'all.